Hey, what's up guys, it's Alex, and today we're gonna to be doing the Q&A video a lot of you guys have been asking for. I've had a bunch of questions about what gear I use, what does your studio look like, what do you do other than YouTube, do you go to school? A lot of questions, so I thought it'd be a great idea to do a Q&A video, answer a bunch of these questions for you guys, and just give you my overall point of view on certain things. So, thanks for watching, let's jump right into it, and let's go. By the way, I didn't think a lot of people were gonna be into this Q&A, but after reading questions, I realized there's a bunch of questions. You guys left a bunch of stuff, so it's an absolute blast doing these, and I would love to do them in the future. And thanks for all the overwhelming support you guys are always giving me from commenting on new videos, checking out new videos, dropping likes, dropping comments. Thanks. As always, it's a real pleasure to do these for you guys, so I really appreciate it. So jumping right into this, First question is all about iPad Pro. Do you think you can get away with using one as your everyday computer, including editing YouTube videos? That's a really good question because the iPad Pro is really unique. We've seen iPads before, we've seen laptops, we've seen PCs, we've seen Macs, but the iPad kind of sits within its own category. A lot of people complain and say it's just a tablet, but really and honestly, everyone knows it's not just a tablet, especially with the new operating system in iPad OS. It's created a really great ecosystem. That being said, I do think the iPad Pro can be a replacement for your everyday computer for a certain type of people. And I really wanna clarify that. Not everyone is gonna be able to pick up an iPad Pro and just replace a laptop. Because a lot of people do certain laptop things that the iPad Pro is, it's too early in its stages with iPad OS to really compete against a laptop in. So we're still watching it evolve and it's kind of at a baby stage right now. And I really love this thing. I've got an iPad Pro usually beside me all the times when I'm filming. I've got notes on it. I can control the camera from it. So it's a really great tool that I can use specifically for filming. But when it comes to editing, it's a whole different ballpark. From a content creator perspective, most people have a phone. Most people have a camera on that phone. And with that camera, you can shoot videos. You can shoot videos, drop them onto the iPad, hop into LumaFusion, edit a video, on LumaFusion, on the iPad, do the thumbnail on the iPad and literally upload it from the iPad. So you can create videos. However, in my case, things are a little different, especially when it comes to the type of workflow I usually try to work with. Now, of course, I'd love to use the iPad Pro as an everyday machine, meaning replacing the laptop, replacing the computer, replacing everything. However, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I haven't gotten to the point where I can say iPad Pro everything. And I think we need to wait on that. At least for me, I need to wait on that because I can't just grab the PC in the back, throw it out the window yet, pop an iPad on the table and go with the workflow. And that's because it's hard. It's really hard. I've tried it. I've really tried to switch all iPad Pro, but I just can't. And one of the main reasons is there's a lot of incompatibilities and I still blame iPad OS for certain things. The file size I shoot with is massive. I shoot in 6K RAW. All the videos are shot in 6K RAW on Blackmagic's format, which is B-RAW. B-RAW is a format that's extremely high file size. Basically, the files are 700 gigs to a terabyte after each project, and I really can't work on them on an iPad Pro. I usually have to use them on the machine in the back, which is my PC workstation that I've had for about a year now, and I edit on DaVinci Resolve, which is a free editing program. So. If you want to start a channel, I definitely recommend DaVinci Resolve. It's a free, heavy-duty, Hollywood-grade color editing program and video editing program, so definitely check it out. I'll get into the file formats and video production mumbo-jumbo towards the end of the video, but for right now, talking about the iPad Pro again, the iPad Pro is awesome. I love it. Can you use it as your everyday computer? Yes and no, depending on the type of person you are, but a lot of people can use it as your everyday computer. For me, I'm still trying to get there. I can edit thumbnails on it. Video editing, though, is still kind of far away. Next question is kind of layered, so let's start with the first one. What's your favorite laptop released in 2016 or later? Easy question for me to answer. Hands down, Dell XPS 13, when it first came out, compact form factor, really sleek bezels, the price and quality you got was amazing. What's your current primary phone? The iPhone 10. Now, I've had this phone like maybe two years now, and it was great at the start, awesome phone at the start. However, within the last like six months, the battery on this thing is absolutely tanked. I've wirelessly charged it, I've done fast charging, and I think that's actually really negatively impacted the phone. I know I've left it charging overnight somewhat, but the phone has tanked really bad. Like the battery max capacity is maybe 68%, and it's been a lot of bugs, a lot of bugs here and there, so looking to hopefully replace it with maybe something from OnePlus, maybe something from Samsung, from Apple. We'll be seeing what's coming out within the next year. A lot of foldable things, so we're gonna see about that. Next question is, what is the ratio of writing shooting you maintain? So my schedule is usually really busy with school and I'm always trying to aim to do two videos a week even though literally I have never been able to do two videos in a week. So this week, however, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that challenge. I'm gonna drop two videos in a week. This video is being recorded on a Monday. Then usually on Mondays, I'll have an idea, jot down some notes, some bullets, and then on a Tuesday, for example, I will shoot all the B-roll 
Then on a Wednesday, I will shoot the B-roll, shoot any mixed up B-roll or any extra B-roll I need, record all the A-roll, which A-roll is the talking head, B-roll is like the actual product shots that you'll see with like colors in the background, this and that. But when it comes to Wednesdays, Wednesdays are usually the most hectic day. I will wake up really early in the morning, shoot all the A-roll, then edit the entire video and then drop it at like 7 or 8 p.m. I'll have it uploaded. And that's usually the time you guys will see it. Then Thursday and Friday, I'm like swamped with school, so I don't make videos on those days. However, now I'm gonna try to make a lot more videos and hopefully start getting those two videos out a week because I really love doing this. So when it comes to the writing shooting ratio, I usually do stack up a lot of writing, a lot of bullets and notes about the product and this and that, just things that I'd like to point out in the video that I wouldn't specifically remember by just memory. So I do write a lot when it comes to the videos, but shooting is primarily what takes up the most amount of time and editing, of course. So it's probably like 35, 65, I'd say. That's about 35% writing, 65% shooting and editing. What country do you live in? If the US, what state? I do live in the US and I do live in the sunshine state of Florida. What camera do you use for your videos? I use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and we'll get into that later when we do the little studio tour I've got saved up. Dogs or cats? I'm a dog man myself, nothing against cats. My production manager, Chloe, she's a Pembroke Welsh Corgi and she's always on set making sure all the videos are getting done. So big dog guy. Next question is, who are your top 10 tech YouTubers you watch often? So. I'd say Linus Tech Tips, Kyle from Bitwit Kyle, Paul's Hardware, MKBHD, Random Frank P, Your Average Consumer, Snazzy Labs, TLD Today, Potato Jet, Austin Evans. I'd say those are the 10, top 10 that I usually am watching here and there. There's a ton of other tech YouTubers that I really enjoy watching, but those are about the first 10 that I can list off the top of my head. And that being said, I have learned so much from all those guys, all the knowledge and content they share with us is really inspiring, especially if you wanna jump into the world of tech and you can really learn a lot on YouTube. Guys like Potato Jet, I started watching him maybe four months ago and from four months ago to now, I have learned from knowing nothing about cameras, taking one of his classes to knowing a lot more about cameras, but I'm still learning and it's part of a process every day. You're always learning and when it comes to YouTube, it's a great platform to really learn about new things. And for anyone starting a channel out there, you have YouTube as this massive knowledge database that you can jump in and really learn anything you want. Next question is, what other job slash occupation do you have other than YouTube? Right now, I'm a full-time student at the University of Florida studying computer engineering. And when it comes to jobs, I've worked retail and I've worked on doing kind of side jobs with programming and done general like IT stuff. Where do you edit your videos? I actually edit all the videos on the PC in the back right there and it's absolutely served me awesome for the past about year I've had it and I also game on it. So it's a great, nice little workstation. Follow-up question is, what's your favorite car? Next question is, how do you have the money for this tech? So really and honestly, I don't. Most of the products that you'll see on the channel, like the razor blade I featured last week and a lot of the other products are not mine. Most of the time they're borrowed. And I do have some friends in the retail tech space that I can just borrow some open box products, review them, do a video with them, and then they end up going back. So most of the things that I do feature are not personally mine other than the gear I record with. So the camera, for example, the computer in the back, my personal iPad Pro, but other than that, all that other tech is borrowed and usually returned. Next question is, where did the inspiration for Spectre come from? So, good question. Completely random. I wish I had a really interesting, fun story to tell you about it, but really and honestly, it was just a gamer tag or just online screen name I had from a long time ago, and it kind of just carried on and carried on as through the years went by. Wanted to make a channel and was like, hey, why not Spectre? Sounds pretty nice and sleek and clean, so went with it. The follow-up question to that is, do you wanna have a team and be big or go solo and keep it smaller? So I really don't know, and that's not really a concern of mine right now. The concern I've always had with this channel since the start, which was not even that long ago, is kind of funny, was just keep the content and quality awesome. Keep it something that I really wanna watch myself and keep it a nice community. I always love responding to comments. If you drop a comment, there is a big chance I'm gonna to respond to it because I really enjoy having that feedback and interaction with the people that watch the content. So that's my primary focus now, but whatever the future holds, whether the channel does grow and get big and we can grow into a big team, that'd be awesome. You know, having the ability to have more members on the team and just increase the quality of the content and increase the efficiency of the videos would be great to do, but really the future will be able to tell us what's gonna happen. But as for right now, just keep the content really nice and great.
I've had companies reach out to me in the past about sponsored videos and sponsored pre-roll ads. However, I don't believe in a lot of those products and I don't like running a bunch of nonsense pre-roll ads that are just gonna crowd up the video and really take away from the entire experience. The final follow-up question is, how has your experience on YouTube been so far and what are your plans for the future? So my experience on YouTube so far has been amazing. Seriously amazing, since talking to other creators like Fernando Silva, RJ Tech, you gotta check those guys out. I'll have them linked down in the description. They're awesome guys and they make really awesome content. So go ahead and check them out. The tech community has been overwhelmingly welcoming to me and I really appreciate it. So as for the future, I think just keep going. That's what my plan is for the future right now. Just keep going, just keep making video by video by video and just keep making the content as good as I possibly can. Next question is, would you like YouTube to be your full-time job? Yes, absolutely. I'd love YouTube to be my full-time job, but because of you guys, little by little, it's getting closer to becoming a reality. But I think my main point right now is I have so much to learn that I really need to get there before I can take it on as a full-time endeavor. Because of right now, I still think my videos can be so much better. So little by little, we're getting closer to that goal, but it's absolutely a dream of mine. Next question is, hey man, love all the videos and can't wait till you make it big with your channel. And I gotta ask you, how did you start off your channel so well? Tech-wise, example, camera, editing, ETC. First of all, let me say, thank you, dude. I've seen you commenting on a bunch of the other videos before and on Twitter, so I appreciate you dropping the comment. And I think it's an interesting story on how I even got the camera or kind of started with a tech background. The camera itself was a pretty big investment for me because I had never bought such an expensive piece of gear for something I had no idea to do. I got this camera before I even knew how to use a camera. So it's definitely, it's like buying a Ferrari without knowing how to drive one. So really interesting story behind it. I got the camera instead of getting a car. So the camera itself is the reason I don't have a car and is also the reason why I can make videos that are a lot higher quality than what you get, for example, out of a phone. I wanted to start off with a nice camera and a nice base for all the videos. So that's why I went with the camera. Yes, it was a pretty serious investment, but at the end of the day, it's worth every single dollar. Now, that being said, I did have a process of trying to learn how to use everything. You know, I got a bunch of lights, I mean, I did have two lights that I purchased that are somewhat professional lights for a hundred bucks, but the main light behind everything is this Home Depot hybrid light. There's basically a Home Depot overhead light that's super bright that my dad and I kind of fashioned into a tripod and made it a death trap of a light. That's really dangerous, but it outputs a lot of light. It's about a hundred bucks for the entire setup and it does give off a lot of light and it's actually somewhat of the light you see on my face and it pretty much lights all the videos. So. I tried to make a somewhat of a professional video production with a pretty tight budget. Yes, most of the budget went to the camera, the tripod, I'll have everything listed in the description below. So for the final questions, it's what's your history with tech and why did you start YouTube? So I've always really wanted to do YouTube videos ever since I was like 11, 12 years old. I was really big into modding Xbox controller circuit boards like LEDs and soldering videos on YouTube. So I watched a lot of that. However, around 2012, I stumbled across the Linus Tech Tips channel and I got really big into computers. I watched one of the first build guides in like 2013, then fell onto Paul's hardware, Bitwit Kyle, really fell into the whole PC building aspect of things and loved it. That was kind of the first real hard tech push I went into, I was about 12 years old and I built my first computer watching his guide and it was an absolutely awesome experience. So. I learned a lot through these guys. And from there, as the years progressed, I started watching other YouTubers getting into tech heavily and it kind of progressed into what it is today. I really discovered my passion for technology through YouTube and I always felt that sooner or later, I'd eventually love to share my experiences with tech and love for it on the platform itself. So that's why I knew that, hey, when I had the funds available to kind of pull the trigger, buy a camera, get some gear and go for it. I was like, let's go for it, let's start and let's jump into it. So that's kind of the story of how I jumped into it. So guys like Linus from Linus Tech Tips, Marquez from MKBHD, Paul from Paul's Hardware, Kyle from Bitwig Kyle, Jay from Jay's Two Cents, Gene from Potato Jet. I can just be here all day naming names. I really appreciate everything you guys have done and all the knowledge you guys have shared with me. Thanks for all the content you guys create and thanks for being a massive inspiration to me. And as for everyone that watches the channel, thank you so much for supporting me and dropping comments and watching the videos. So here's to another million videos. It's been Alex. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.